Hey guys, it's Jim at Pokemon here, and I'm bringing you guys my ultimate binder video. So basically, I recommend that everyone have a, some sort of binder collection in addition to any graded cards or any other way that they collect cards. It's just a great way to display things that are your favorites that maybe don't necessarily have to do so, that have like a quality element. Maybe they have like a rarity element with it. So what I want to do right here is just take you through a binder I put together that I've showcased at several Worlds events and different events when I go to meet people. And I just want to show it to you. Um, before I discuss that, uh, I'm going to do a few things with it, but I'll talk about that later. So these are all off-center cards. You can kind of tell, and this camera setup is new. It's kind of hard with the lights on both sides and trying to get the angle right, so um, bear with me here. But these are all off-center cards, and uh, we'll take a little bit more time just to explain everything. So we've got a Shadowless Alakazam up here. This is the 1992-2000 Raichu. And pretty much everything here is shifted either top to bottom or left to right which is pretty cool and then this page right here is really awesome and so a lot of off-center hollows as you go on through I think this might even be like a Neo Destiny hollow which is pretty cool got Shadowless Charizard, the Unlimited Charizard, a bunch of Shadowless like Growlithe and this one even has like a print dot right there um, I don't want to touch my camera because I think it might like not stay where it's at it's like hovering it's barely hanging on there uh, you got Shadowless Gyarados uh, here, right here. Probably one of the, the most off center Nine Tails I've ever seen, which is amazing. It's got a nice little print dot right there. Clefairy's off center top to bottom. And I think this might be a, uh, yeah, this is a Cosmos Machamp. So it comes from that special uh, promo, like theme deck thing. Or I, I always forget what it's from, but <laughs> you can fact check me. Uh, this is Legendary Collection Non Hollow. And some of these aren't quite as off center. And my opinion of off center cards is tightened up a lot over the years but when I first started putting this together like I was a little bit more lenient on some and so the next page here is just a massive page of legendary collection Charizards back when I was chasing this set it was so hard to find these so hard to, to go after them that I just started picking them up for like 25 30 bucks a piece and when I got to the end I was starting to pay like 50 60 bucks a piece just because they're hard to find and most of the cards in this whole binder um, as long as it's not bent up or creased or has like a million like hall full of scratches, like I picked it up. So a lot of these might be light play or so. Um, excellent. Not too much mint or near mint just because of the prices of some of these cards. I started pulling out the mint cards and started grading them. But still, I mean, how often do you see like a Charizard picture like that? I almost just like want to take a picture real fast. It's, um, it's kind of hard to see. But next up, we have Shadowless Dragonair. And there is a missing space because I was at Worlds last year and Arita was there to sign. And he actually, um, like we didn't know he was gonna be there. And so I tried to find the, one of the mintest, the most mint cards I could find and Dragonair was one of them. And so I literally just found it, pulled it out. It's by Arita. He got it signed and now it's like a part of my collection. It uh, graded a PSA 9 for the signature and the card grade. So there's still a gap there, but to me it's like a cool story and maybe I'll, uh, replace that at some point and then one of my all-time favorite cards here no symbol jolteon this is insane one of my favorite favorite binder pictures um, when it got to the end i had to make an instagram post literally to help finish it because i was buying them out and the prices went up to like 25 bucks for like the lowest one out there and now they're at the time of recording this video they're down about eight to like 12 bucks i can find them like a lot of times but um, the price really shot up there when I was trying to build this build this out, but I absolutely love this page. It is like one of my favorite pages I've ever seen, and I just I'm a huge huge fan of Jolteon. So getting something like this is is like unreal. I'm gonna take a little photo right there. Literally, I gotta just I gotta hold on to that. And then a card I've been bullish on for a really long time is Mew from Expedition. Those of you guys that don't know, Mew is the only, the Expedition Mew is the only holographic Mew you can pull from a booster pack. So I'm not talking about promos or things you can go to the movies and get, or um, literally I'm talking about a random booster pack where you don't know what card you're going to get. So on the left-hand side we have the reverse holo version, and the right-hand side we have the holographic version. Uh, those of you guys that are familiar with Expedition, you do know there are two versions of this. There's the number 19 and the number 55. These are all the number 19 version. So... It's another big story with that. And so now we're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to get into some of my error cards. And this is this has taken a really long time to do. Some of these cards are impossible to find. 
And what I really wanted to do, my end goal, was to get four of each error card. And I'm close, but not quite there on a lot of them. So up here we have no damage nine tails. And I actually had uh, more, but I sold them off to someone. I sold like six off to someone. Um, he was making a strong offer at the time, and then PSA stopped grading them. And I was like, oh, I should have held on to those no damage nine tails. They're so hard to find. Uh, so this is all I have right now for loose no damage nine tails, the four. These are the no stage war turtle errors. So they have a war turtle in the top left hand corner. So it's like war turtle evolves from war turtle. And with nine tails, it should have an attack right here, but it's missing the attack number. Just to show you, that's what the no damage is. Um, Blastoise, this is a stage error Blastoise. And so it's missing the, it, it should have stage right here. And it's missing that, it should evolve from war turtle stage. I think it's stage one, yeah, something like that. We got four of those. And then dragon air. These are Shadowless Dragonairs, and they have the rainbow error up through the uh, number right here. So the Shadowless version is much harder to find than the first edition version, and I'd like to do a row of first edition Shadowless. Um, yeah. The Haunters are the stain Haunters, not the uber rare orange stain, but these are like the purple stain right here. You can see they all have a stain. And uh, I really hope this video turns out great because I don't know how else I, I could record this. Uh, next page, we have the um, first edition Ivy Pikachus. I believe this came in a jungle jungle booster packs the first edition when the promo it really should be unlimited um, as most of them are uh, it's about maybe like a hundred dollar card or so these are all key edition butterfreeze where the first edition stamp has a d in it and these we call just scratch air pincers because you can see there's a little scratch going uh through them right there uh the pikachus these are all ghost stamp pikachus and so the first edition stamp is very very faint almost like a ghost uh, these two aren't errors, they're just pre-release Clefables. Just really, really hard to find. I thought they deserved it. And these are heart Clefairies. So this Clefairy has a circle around it, but this one does not. The circle is much more rare. And these are um, the Cigar Stain Hitmon Lees. And it, it's been verified, like this is not from a cigar wrapper or anything like that. It's just the name that someone gave it, it's stuck. When you say that Cigar Hitmon Lee, people know exactly what you're talking about. And so that's why, um, I just still call it that. And so it's interesting how some names maybe not are 100% accurate, but they relate. So you have the no HP Persian where it's missing the HP up here. And this is the corrected Blanche Charizard where it has a fire symbol right here where the majority of them have the fighting symbol. Um, what I wanted to do here was just show the four variations of Fossil Zapdos. You have the first edition version. You have the most common version, the unlimited version, where... Um, it's uncorrected right here. There's like a little bit of hollow foil that's hard to see. It's missing. And then this version is the corrected version, which is the rarest version of them all. It has the hollow foil replaced, but it says 1999 as a copyright date. And this version came in a theme deck where the hollow foil is Cosmos. It is corrected, but you can tell really quickly by the copyright date being 1999 to 2000. So just the four versions of Zapdos. I thought that was a cool page. Um, honestly, I just need to build this out. It wouldn't. It's actually probably pretty easy to do. All right. Oh, yeah. And this is where the binder starts getting less filled up. But what I wanted to do here was basically show the Neo Revelation hollow bleed or double hollow errors or whatever you want to call it, where the first edition version of these are much harder to find. They're almost like they're really hard to find now. Unlimited is much more common. I probably say Unlimited is like 10% of the print run. First edition might be like 1% or 2% of the print run, just in my opinion. So this left-hand side, you know, all these celebrities have a little bit extra hollow foil on them, kind of hard to see. Same with the Crobats, same with the Houndooms. And uh, these two Houndooms are unlimited, but literally it's, it's like, as you can tell, it's very hard to find first edition ones. And if I get a first edition nine, I'm not gonna crack it out of a case to put in a binder. I'm just, I'm gonna keep it in that, uh, that case. Yeah, so here you go. There's the first edition of Mistrevis. <laughs> there you go, finally one came around. And then I got really lucky, the card world was selling like three or four of these. And I was like, hey, can you just ask, can you guys like check, see if the shiny Magikarp is a little bit extra hollow? It's like, yeah, these are like really hollow foil. And so I bought like three or four of these from them for like maybe 55 bucks each. So I was really happy about that. And it seems the shinings are easier to find than the regular hollow foils. And so the card missing here is ho -Oh. So it'd be like unlimited ho -Oh, first station of ho -Oh. And then on this page would have the shiny Gyarados at the top, the unlimited, the first edition. And then since these are two really big chase cards, I figured I'd do like a page of first edition Amphros near Rev. 
and then like a page of Typhlosion from Neogenesis. Thought that'd be look cool if you could just see like a whole page of like first edition. That would be really really cool. And then next up, Shadowless was hot there for a while. It was really interesting. So I said, hey, why not just throw three complete Shadowless sets in a binder? And so that's that's basically what I did. And so these next two pages are literally three Shadowless Hollowful sets. No errors, literally just Shadowless cards that look beautiful in a binder. So very happy about that. And then, yeah, I got the extra Machamp. I was missing a Machamp there for a while because I, I kept ordering Shadowless Machamps and people kept sending me unlimited Machamps. And I was like, dude, I, I just want a Shadowless Machamp. Um, next up, I had some extra Blastoise, Charizard, and Venusaur. So I thought I'd just make a row of each. Um, I still need two Venusaur, so something I'm not in a rush to get, but it looked cool just to see the three starters, like an unlimited, just right there. Thought that was interesting. Then I had a few extra Charizards over the years, and I figured I would just do like two of each of the OG Charizards. So, like Legendary Collection Reverse, Base of Two, this is the non hollow, and um, I'll probably fill out the rest. And then a few more Charizards here. These are all Cosmos Charizards, Cosmos Holofoil. Um, got these all from like sealed packs. This is the legendary treasures and um, I think power keepers maybe When this Charizard came out, I thought it was just gorgeous. I thought it looked really really cool It's textured when you hold it in person I just thought it was a, it was, it was a neat Charizard. It was high quality and it was a promo and it was easy to get It was like eight bucks. So I was like, all right, let's just do like a page of them And so when you had like the textured Charizard that was affordable, I was like, yeah, let's do it um, it'd be awesome to do something like that with Burning Shadows, but I am not that rich, so there's no way uh, I'm going to pay that kind of money for that. Um, and oh, surprise, surprise, another No Damage Ninetales. Um, these are other cool cards that sort of came to me over time, and I just really liked them. So I threw them in here, like Shadowless Chansey. They're, it's really hard to get a PSA 9. The price is up there. I had an extra Mew. Amphros, I'm a big fan of. I've actually debated whether I had to do like a page of like um, Aquapolis Amphros right there. Um, the Winter Hitmonchan was a really hard card to grade, and then a few sealed packs came up, became a lot easier. Uh, but yeah, just generally just random things there. And then these are all like played um, gold stars. They're not mint by any means. They're not excellent. They're not near mint. They're literally played. And I thought they looked really cool. And so this is just a way that I can sort of be involved in that era and just having a binder. You know, you're looking at a Gulsar Quasa, Gulsar Charizard, they're like beautiful. And then I figured I'd do maybe a few level X's, but Alakazam is really the only one that's like sparked my interest so far. But maybe I'll do another row of gold stars. But anyway, really, really cool. Just add more um, flavor to the binder. Oh, here we go. It's getting interesting. Um, I think I got these from Worlds. Uh, I like that. I think it was like a pack. These are the no number Charizards. I'd like to do like a full row. These are no rarity Charizards. These have actually spiked in price since I bought these two um, from a friend in Australia. And so doing a full row of those might be really expensive. Another Ghost Ant Pikachu. And okay, now if I show this, please do not hound me for it. I would love to keep this card. Um, so sometimes, like I love showing things and sharing things, but sometimes when people know you have something, they just, um, will hound you until you sell it or want to let it go or I mean there's some cards I've even given a really really high but this card right here is okay all right so max recording time okay so this card right here if you look at it it has a first edition stamp on the back it's literally a back stamp first edition card from base set these are actually pretty hard to find because they go into the radar really hard to pick up when you find it and are you ready for what card it is yeah it's a red cheeks Pikachu this is like one of the rarest back stamp Pikachus out there. Um, it's not gradable by any means, but it is incredibly, incredibly hard to find first edition Red Cheeks. But I put that little sticker there, so I did not just misplace it or anything. I knew there was something rare with it, but showing that um, this, this is an uber, uber rare card. So having that in this ultimate binder um, definitely makes it very unique. Um, what I wanted to do with these staff cards, these are literally like staff cards from like Worlds. They're not as hard to acquire as you might think, but certain years are very, very hard to acquire. And so I am missing some years. I am not willing to pay the exorbitant amount that some of the years demand. So right now there's just a few gaps uh, in those years, but still really cool. And as I go to Worlds each year, it's kind of my memento uh, from Worlds, which is nice. 
Uh, so again, I love Jolteon. Surprise, surprise. This is a first edition jungle page. This is an unlimited jungle page. And I ran out of pages. Or I mean, over time, I may just do full pages. Who knows? I ran out of space. This is Legendary Collection, the regular hollow. Legendary Collection Reverse Hollow, which this is becoming more expensive, a more and more expensive card. And so, um, literally filling out the rest of the gaps, like, I, I don't want to pay like 60 bucks for it. So I'm just waiting for a few to pop up that are played condition. But I thought that was a really nice looking page. And then the back page, um, I'd like to do like sign cards and stuff, which would be cool. Uh, this girl, Boat Angers, I went to, she, um, did a painting for me, a Jolteon painting. I think I've shown that on my Instagram, but I went to her house to pick it up and she gave me a Shadowless Raichu and then I signed a card for her as well. A few more Jolteons. These are Machamps. This is 1999-2000, the, the base set, Nitto King. Make sure it's focused. And these are a few crimp cards at the bottom. So PSA does not grade crimp cards very well. I mean, if you were to grade a PSA, they'd all get a very, very low grade. But you can see it's base set two, uh, Energy, Machamp, this might be the Cosmos. Yeah, it's Cosmos. And then two of the WB. So really, really cool binder. Very, very excited. I'll just flip back through this one more time just so you guys can see it all in really quick. Um, I've literally spent three or four years putting this together. Um, it's evolved over time. I've taken some things out, added some things, rearranged things, you know, just having something that's not quite as, you know, like set based, I guess. Something that's a little bit more random. Things that you enjoy, that you acquire, that you sort of have uh, something tied to, and um, they basically, you know, it's very fulfilling to build something like this that takes a long time, and it takes a lot of money too. Like this, this is not cheap by any means, and so, but over time, you know, you can do something like this. It's not something you could just step into right away, but if you have the time, the patience, the chase um, to build something like this, you can you can build something very very cool. And so, why I wanted to make this video right now was because this is a near complete binder and it's really in two different sections. In my opinion, there are cards that I really like that are together and then there are error cards that are um, sorted together. So I see that as basically two different binders. And so what I did was I went and bought another one of these and what I would like to do, I actually haven't even opened this up yet. And, oh man, don't fall on me. <laughs> What I'd like to do is basically build a second binder, and I really wanted to show this one before I split it up and did something different, just because I, I literally have years of memories like with this showing other people. And so the goal is gonna be to build a separate binder. One of them will be for duplicates, cards I really like that I click doubles of. The other one will be exclusively for error cards, which I think is a, a great like dual combo. And I think um, like the Error cards I showed that were loose like this from back in May of uh, 2019. I literally have cards I haven't put in here yet because this has been my plan for a few months. And so like these I pulled out of a pack. I think these I bought on eBay for like five bucks each. So I do like a modern like miscut or OC cards. Um, some more error cards. There's another Heart Clefairy, another Dragonair. Uh, no number Charizard. And so I'm already prepping for that next binder. And then these I think I've shown before in another video. But basically, the next step was literally splitting up the binder. So I want to share this with you guys. Neo Rev Hollows. Look, some first edition ones. I can finally add first edition to that. Is this focused? I really hope this is focused. So I can finally add some first edition. Um, and some more Typhlosion. Another Typhlosion. Another No Number Charizard. So I have the whole row of four. Uh, so this would be really exciting. And I think I want to do a whole page of these. But the price on these actually spiked. I, I told you guys I was paying like 16 bucks each for these when they came out. They are literally like... 35 40 bucks I think last time I looked like oh my gosh that was that's a big spike and so let me know what you guys think do you guys like my idea of splitting this up um, do you like my binder idea in general or how do you do your binders like what are some things you do and I just think this is a way that we can all sort of connect and you can tell me um, about your collections and and how you manage them and so I'm always looking for new ideas and things like this keep the hobby fun new exciting so um, let me know what you guys think and so until Next time, it's really cool off-center Pikachu. All right, take care, guys.